no idle drop when you pull the connector off the IAB, that's a bad sign. Okay, with key on, engine off, we've got two stick pins stuck on the uh, connector. One's the hot side where I'm putting the red probe, and then I'm putting the black probe here. And I'm just looking for what I get for a reading. And it just stops at 12 volts. So that tells me we have a problem with the IAB circuit because that should be fluctuating. And it's not. It just fluctuated there because I'm moving the uh, probes. So there's a problem here. There's, there's probably a short either in the wiring or the uh, computer itself has an issue because it's not giving a signal to this IAB. And we've replaced this IAB with a, with a, a known no, new good one. And it, it hasn't done any good. So, And we'll also troubleshoot this as well to show you that it's good. Just for the heck of it, with the engine running. The engine's vibrating too much, it's hard to get a reading. But you can see the only fluctuation is from the drop in engine idle, which is causing in increase in voltage with it running. Obviously you got more voltage from the alternator with the system running than it off. But it's not pulsing, so it's definitely got a problem. We got the salt and pepper shakers apart right here. This is the part that goes back to the uh, inside the wiring harness underneath the, you know, in the car uh, towards the computer. This is the computer wiring harness. Um, the bottom half here, that's where this wire from the uh, IAB, this wire right here, this blue and green one, is going to go right into this terminal, I think, right here. And then we want to come over here and we're going to touch right over here and we're going to ohm it and it's looking at the voltmeter we're showing two or three tenths of an ohm so that shows that that circuit is not grounded it's not open so we know the circuit from here to here is good now we have to figure out if the circuit from there through the firewall and to the computer is good and then then we'll know whether we have a bad computer or not we're moving the right bolt. It's just kind of, yeah, it should just pull out. There we go. Oh yeah, I remember how to do that. I had to do that to put these weather strips in. Yep. Now with the blower motor case out, we have access to the Mustang's ECU. This will avoid denting the case and it will actually make the process of removing this ECU a whole lot easier. There we go. Seven millimeter? Yeah. Just yep. a little green seven millimeter. Yep. And then I think that box will just slide down and we can get the harness off. Yep. So much easier with that blower motor housing out of the way. Got it. And we got it. So we just have to undo that center bolt on the connector. Peter's out. <laughs> Our bee friend helped us get the computer out. There we go. It looks good. We didn't dent anything. All that stuff looks pretty good. So we'll just have to uh, come in here and we got to find which one is the uh, IAB connector going up to the computer and we'll, uh, we'll ohm it out and see if we've got continuity from this connector up to under the hood where we showed before. Here. We went ahead and just reconnected the salt and pepper shaker because we know that the continuity is good from the IAB connector to there 
and we want to check for continuity from the IAB connector all the way up underneath the car. So I'm just going to put the test lead on that position right there. That would be that blue and white wire. And then Austin's going to take and put his probe on pin number 21 on the ECU harness. And then we're going to see if we've got, if we've got flow. And I think, I think we've got try hitting it again probably not there we go all right so we definitely we don't have a broken connection between the uh, IAB connector and the computer harness it's good so that leads me to believe that it's probably in the computer unfortunately but hey that's troubleshooting right all right I guess it's off to the shop we're gonna pull this box open and see what we can find we're just gonna pull the the lid off of this uh, ECU and we're going to just see what the inside looks like. We might get lucky. Maybe it's just got some leaking cap uh, capacitors that we can replace. Otherwise we'll be looking at uh, buying a rebuilt one. And I think the one we used to take the top screws off was a 15, T15. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And then we should be able to just pivot that lid right up and we'll have a look-see inside the box. There we go. Take a look in here. Yep, the capacitor doesn't look too well right there. That one looks okay ish. This one over here looks like it might have a problem. Yep. Green fuzz coming out of it. Yep. That's a leaking capacitor. Oh, that one has some fuzz coming out of it too, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, you can see where it corroded on the connection, where it soldered in. Well, that would explain the problem. Yeah. I think, I think we basically have uh, the electrolyte leaked out of the capacitors. And, that would explain uh, an intermittent issue. Yeah, and probably one of those capacitors is probably what helps control that IAB circuit. And basically all the computer's doing is it's just completing the ground for that IAB valve and it cycles it. So, you know, it's got the 12-volt red wire, and then the, the uh, white and uh, blue one is just switching the ground on and off at a you know, high frequency. So that's probably the issue right there. And if we can get new capacitors, I probably can fix this one and we won't have to spend the money to get a rebuilt one. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you can see how the electrolytes leaked out and how the contacts are, you know, the, the are corroded, the legs on them. That one doesn't look terrible. But uh, that first one there, that one's really, uh, you can see all the nasty stuff, especially this one down here, the end of the chassis. You get up in there, you can see all kinds of stuff that's oozed out of it right in there. Oh, yeah. That's definitely done. We're just scraping off this rubberized coating that they put on the board, which I guess is designed to protect the um, all the printed circuits from corrosion, moisture damage, whatever. Um, we don't want to have any of this rubbery stuff getting into the solder. I'm going to come over here and scrape this one off as well. It's kind of easy to see what I'm doing because this coating looks like it's ambered. So it gives everything kind of a goldish appearance, which it really isn't. Underneath here should just be silver solder. We're just going to come in and suck a little bit of that solder out. Looks like I pulled most of it out. You can see a little bit of a hole there. We'll hit this one more time.
Come over this way. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take our 47 microfarad, which is rated at 50 volts, putting it in with the zero facing us through those two holes I cleaned up really good, just like that. And we can leave them in a little tall. See, there's the clearance right there. They can be a little tall. It's not going to hurt anything. And then I've got plenty of feet underneath here to heat up with the soldering iron. I'm just going to put a little blip of solder um, on each leg going through, and that will complete the install. It's going to come in. We're going to get this joint warm. And we just want a blob of solder right there. The, we want to get the pin hot. We also want to get the that warm as well. Three, four, five, about ten seconds should get it. There we go. That's got it, Bubba. We're just going to just cut this leg off so it doesn't short out on the chassis. And we bolt it back down. Come in here. Clip those off. Those are plenty short. There we go. Looks factory. All right, moment of truth. Right? Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It might have been with shipping. It might have been fifteen dollars. I bought it on eBay. Less than twenty bucks. And yeah, great. they were they were advertised as the uh, uh, most current uh, Japanese-made uh, capacitors available, which I think the original ones in that Motorola uh, ECU made for Ford was a. Uh, I think those were Japanese sourced. Uh, I guess electrolytic capacitors. I'm by no means a uh, electronics whiz. But, uh, yeah, replacing those three capacitors and it went from running like poop uh, to running like new again. That's amazing because it wouldn't hold an idle a cold. It wouldn't cold start very well. And now it just fires right up. I think it was just a tad stumbly because, you know, we had the, the thing apart. And, you know, it does have to learn a little bit. But uh, it, the high idle part wasn't working at all. So, good deal. Just take your time putting it back together. Holler if you need help getting the uh, uh, blower motor box back in. We want to be delicate with that. We don't want to break that. Yeah. And then uh, we'll be ready for a road test. Yep. Now it doesn't try and stall on you. It's not bucking anymore. No. It's smooth. Normally it would have bucked in the second gear. It would have been shaking. Yeah, it's working good. Oh, I don't have my license on me. That's all right. We're not going far. Yeah, it's way 
smoother, it doesn't buck in between the shifts. Rebuilt computer. You're welcome. All right, cold start. It's been sitting overnight. Let's see how it does with the new computer. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Hope to see you next time.